thanks. So my, my name my name is Laurent. I am the CEO of Aussie Studio, and I'm I'm here this morning with uh, François and uh, Baptiste, and uh, we will start by a very short um, story of what uh, Amos and Aos is with François, and we have a few demos for you and one uh, one very new and I think unique, which is uh, an Amiga transpiler. So you write your software on your PC or your Mac, and you will be able to do a bootable disk on your Amiga. So um, let's start with uh, Francois. Microphone. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. OK, so nice to see you guys. Oh, well, not see you, but nice to be online with you. Uh, can I share my screen, Laurent? I would like to join the AOZ website in the history part, so it will be a lot easier. Okay. I think uh, this one. Share. So can you see my screen? Okay. So as you might know, uh, I am. Uh, I wrote Amos in uh, nineteen. 87, uh, no, 1988 and 99 uh, up to 93. Uh, it was in, uh, I was young and uh, I was doing my military service, uh, so it was uh, entirely written in the castle. Uh, but basically, it was uh, before that I was doing some games, adaptations, and stuff like that to survive. And uh, then we made stars on the, sorry to say, Atari ST but there has to be someone first. And uh, it, was, uh, it was feeling a gap in the market in the UK because it was most of all uh, English product. Uh, because a lot of kids, you know, who got an, an Atari ST and wanted to make games at the time. And uh, there was no real serious language. GFA was not uh, famous on the Atari at that time. Uh, so, uh, Stoss really was a big success with uh, over 100,000 sales on the first year and this kind of thing. So, really high number and uh, your press of club was a really big publisher in the UK, which helped. Uh, like the, at the time, they owned, they were publishing half of the computer magazine in England. So, uh, you know, it, it really helped. So, after uh, the Atari ST in 1988, uh, your press felt that the market, the Atari ST market was being uh, ravaged by the Amiga, of course, especially in England, and the, with the wonderful marketing techniques of uh, John. So uh, Amos, so I started to program Amos, and it uh, was released in 1989, and it was an even bigger success. Uh, with uh, publications on magazines and stuff like that. It was a real emulation. So uh, I did a couple of products. So there were Amos, there were Amos Compiler, which turns the basic language into Amiga 68,000 code. Then Amos Pro, then Amos Pro Compiler, and there was another product called Easy Amos. So, you know, uh, and um, then the Amiga died, and uh, for me, my relationship with Amiga was kind of complex. So I uh, forgot about it. But only five, like five years ago, I started to receive uh, mails on LinkedIn, uh, basically, or Facebook, of people, uh, you know, uh, reaching their 40s and uh, coming back to what they did in their youth. And um, they all thanked me for having taught them programming. And I say, what? I didn't teach you anything. I didn't want to. But uh, as uh, time went on, I received hundreds of letters. And it start, I started to think about making an Amos 2. So that's why I created uh, a page on Patreon in a moment where my uh, level of money was really low. And the rest is history. Uh, during one year, I was alone. Then I had the luck to meet, uh, at first, the Kickstarter of the project, Baptiste Pilo, who is a background programmer, and then Laurent, and then Baptiste uh, Pido on screen. And uh, we are a wonderful team. And uh, now the product is uh, really advancing all right. Uh, that's about it, Laurent. 
Uh, great. So let's. Uh, I will uh, stop my screen. You. I, I, I shared my screen. Um, so I, I think you get it. The idea. Uh, the idea is to uh, allow everyone to start coding. And basically, we wanted to reproduce the chance we had when we started. Uh, like uh, we were switching the computer on with a print hello, and it was magic. It, it, it was running. And um, unfortunately, after that, programming became uh, very complicated. I have to say, just to be sure that the audience is still uh, here, I have to say that I am an Atari ST guy. Uh, and look here is the PC board number, I think, seven or eight of Atari ST. Um, and I had a chance as a trainee <laughs> to, to work uh, for uh, Commodore in France. And uh, I meet uh, several times Jack Tramiel, uh, et cetera. So um, that, was, that was an incredible time, an incredible chance to be able to start programming from scratch. And this is basically what we want to, to, to do. Uh, I want to say before really starting that uh, uh, François, Baptiste and I, we really want basically to give back what we had the chance to, to have at that time. And so uh, our studio is what is called a company with a mission. Um, and uh, our studio is and will remain always free for kids, for children with disabilities, uh, reintegration, for women uh, in digital. We, we, we are helping and we want to help as much as we can all these people. Uh, to have the chance to start uh, learning programming, which is now not possible with uh, with AOZ Studio. Uh, so yeah, a lot of work, uh, and uh, I, uh, I I think uh, uh, François, you may start with uh, with a demo and uh, explaining what uh, the product is, uh, and then uh, I'll go back afterwards. François? Sorry, so what do I show? I show the direct mode and the 3D and this kind of things. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. And uh, basically, I'm going to boot AOZ Studio so that you can see the, the boot screen. Uh, so uh, we want, uh, I personally wanted the AOZ Studio to be a real game engine. The, the main focus of uh, AOZ Studio is education and uh, um, using games to, to educate. So, uh, but uh, with tools like Scratch, there is no hope of making a real good game, whereas in AOZ Studio, you can. So I'm going to show you a couple of games made with AOZ Studio. Uh, so we, uh, sorry. Like this one. So AOZ Studio has uh, mainly two modes of working. You can make, applic oh, sorry, I forgot to, to remove the debugger. So. So what is interesting, so you see this game, which is a modern game that works on uh, telephones and everything. Uh, this game was inspired from another game that was imported from the Amiga, direct from the Amiga, and uh, it only took to the author of uh, Cyborg to convert his previous game that he made like 33 years ago. Uh, it took him uh, like one day. Our goal is, of course, that the conversion of uh, the importation of Amos game is direct without any need on the code. We're nearly there. So this is an Amiga game. In the display emulation of AOZ, well, sorry for the debugger. So you can see the pixels, you can hear the music, and this is the original Amiga game. And when you look at the code, apart from some new instructions that are not necessary that were due during the, the development, it's exactly the same code as the Amiga with screen open, etc. So it is, there is a backward compatibility uh, with Amos application, and there is a possibility that uh, Baptiste will show you later 
to import directly a bigger games. And uh, you know, the, the, the engine, it's a real game engine with uh, professional capabilities uh, to, uh, that you can compare to other famous engine in JavaScript like Construct and this kind of things. So uh, let me start this game. So you can have hundreds of sprites. The renderer is uh, based on 3.js, etc. You can put videos. It's JavaScript. We're just playing with the JavaScript. Uh, the what is also very cool as an educational uh, product is the return. As Laurent said, you tell me Laurent when you want me to stop. I, I don't keep track of the time. Is the return of print. You know, it was simple on a previous computer, and it was a bit less simple on the Amiga, but still the console was very present. But on previous computer, you did the print, and then you could output some text. And when you begin, the fact that in order to have one single piece of text on a window or nowadays languages, it implies a huge amount of code. So basically, I'm going to show you what we want the total beginner to do on AOZ. It's a new application. Okay, I'm going to do a cross-platform application. So I, I did not know anything about programming. I create, and now I do print hello world, and I run. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It will work. Ah, that's a bad demo. <laughs> but look, I will remove. Uh, that's it. Print hello world. So uh, if you do not count uh, the debugger, that should not be displayed because uh, you forgot to close to close it in the code before doing the video, and I'm going to do it. Uh, that's for a beginner. That was my first program without bugs. So. That's what we want. We want positive feedback. We want when the kids, he puts a sprite, he says, wow, when he moves it. We want to bring the joy back into, uh, into coding. The joy uh, using an engine that has capabilities, that is uh, modern, that exports to anything, that is with a language that is simple and powerful. I think that's, uh, that's about it, Laurent. Or do you want me to continue? Okay, th th thanks, Francois. I, I'm sharing my screen again. If you could, could uh, switch your off, I am sharing my screen. Okay, uh, so uh, um, uh, the AOZ Studio language is based on BASIC, but very, very extended. We have about 1,000 instructions and functions, so you basically can do whatever you want including databases, application for smartphones, 2D, 3D, uh, uh, you name it. That's, that's a very, uh, I would say, marketing slide to compare. So for, let's say, for example, you want to do a simple program uh, to display a text and an image. In OZ Studio, you need two lines. You don't have to load any API, SDKs, anything. You just press on the play button and it runs. And what AOZ Studio is doing, um, Francois, just for you to know, you are still sharing your screen. Uh, and uh, so what AOZ Studio is doing uh, is that we transpile the basic uh, source code into uh, JavaScript. And that's why it's running basically um, everywhere. So AOZ Studio is a transpiler from this extended basic to, uh, to JavaScript. Um, where we are today, so we are entering the final beta. We already have uh, 1,500 beta testers. Uh, it's a very, very uh, nice, a great community, uh, very helpful. Uh, and uh, uh, the product is already used by customer like L'Oreal, etc. And the launch date is supposed to be on December 26th. So it's very close now, very soon. Uh, compared to the very hard work, uh, a little more than two and, year, uh, two and a half years of uh, development. Um, we will launch also uh, the AOZ Academy, where we have a lot of tutorials, uh, sessions for uh, kids, adults, to learn how to program, 
uh, including programming robots, because uh, Francois is uh, right now working on uh, uh, programming robots from AOZ, you know, like Mbot 2, Arduino cards, etc., which is uh, which is fun. And now I can make a demo if you want. Just remember um, to now. Now I would like, uh, okay, if, uh, 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 maybe if you want to prepare the demo, I can launch the uh, the video from Baptiste about the the new uh, Amiga uh, transpiler. So let's tell me if you have the sound. Um, one second. Hi, sir. Uh, do you have Do you have the sound of the video? Do you hear the sound of the video? That is the video of CTO and uh, co-founder at the OZ Studio. Uh, as a uh, novel, I also want to explain to you how this studio is uh, direct uh, here uh, to our company, which fully benefits uh, from the experience of its uh, From therefore, since uh, its birth, it, it was essential to be able to in our studio. And we wanted to be able to run them from internal browsing. And uh, why not? Uh, and we them uh, in the apps. But the opposite, exporting to app. Is it possible? Can we, from all of this video, produce an application that works on a real manner? The answer is now yes. I will show it to you right now. The idea is that you will have a that can run on modern machines, but also be prepared to run on the army. For these uh, demonstrations, I am actually quickly uh, that I make more zone. The project is the application that you can find in the panel of the host to your editor. Once this new panel on the application will be included in the V1 version of your system. Okay, okay. Let's see what the uh, program looks like when we run it. From the everything. Okay, uh, you can see the program is configured uh, with the uh, Amiga constraint, like a uh, number of colors and transition. Uh, and uh, now I am going to show you how to compile it directly from the Amiga. To compile the same program as the Amiga.
Thank you, Baptiste. Okay, so uh, you, do you want to show do you want to show something, Francois, or Francois? Do you want your mic? Your mic? Your mic is cut. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah, do, do you want to show something else, or should should I uh, move on? I can show uh, the three D and the robots. Okay, so uh, let me share my screen again. So uh, it's still very much uh, work in progress, but we are in the middle of implementing uh, robotics. So uh, because uh, this kind of robot, like the M-Bot, uh, is very common in all the schools around the world. We want to support a lot of uh, educational robots, like this one as well. Uh, so basically, uh, AOC will, or any school will have a solution to display and uh, allow the kids uh, to practice with, and learn coding with their robots. So let me show you uh, what is back, uh, what we have taken back from AMOS is the concept of accessories. So you have a lot of accessories like uh, this Unicode character uh, display things. Uh, that were really useful uh, in the time of Amos, and you have the robots, the bot simulator. So it asks if the robot is connected. I'm going to say no because uh, you know we're doing some hardware uh, demos with uh, things connected. It's a bit of a problem. The system works uh, with the Python server uh, that does the interface between the, the Python API. Uh, of the mbot and uh, AOZ Studio, and they exchange messages on the same machine in local. So, uh, and uh, the server pilots the robot. So, I'm going to say that my mbot is not corrected. And now I enter AOZ 3D. So, uh, it's uh, of course for the moment very ugly. Uh, but this is what you see. You know, you can see that AOZ natively can display 3D with very simple instruction like cube or this kind of things. Uh, and uh, it has imported the mesh of this robot. And in AOZ, you have a specific language to command robots that are connected to the computer or displayed in the, in the simulator. So the commands all start with bot. It's a generic command that will do its best to adapt to the robot that is connected. If you want some very specific to the robot instruction, then you will have to say, for example, in this case, the mbot2 instruction. So if I want to move a generic robot, I just say move the bot, it is name, and I say I'm going to move it at uh, speed 10. And that's it. So uh, now, I, if I want the bot to turn, sorry. If I want the bot to turn, And if I want the bot to play animations in the LED, uh, let's say, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of animation. I think this will not work. I don't know. Yes. So it's still in, in work in progress, but the kid will be able also to drive the robot from the, from the console, etc. And the 3D universe is going to be responding to physics. So uh, the kids, they will be able to take tubes and put things and uh, simulate, uh, you know, like a maze uh, uh, of which the robot has to go out. So basically, with IOZ Studio, we're offering a complete robotic emulation system which will solve a lot of problems in school, like there is not enough robots for the number of kids. So if you only have a classroom of uh, like uh, 10 computers, you only have two robots, it doesn't matter because with AOZ you can play on the screen and when times come, when the kids have finished their AOZ program for the robot, then they switch turn and connect the robot of the school. And uh, that's why, and such a feature of uh, M-Bot emulator for, of course, uh, completed. 
but in 3D is a very costly uh, piece of software that uh, most schools do not get. Uh, and uh, you know, if I want to make some 3D, uh, I am in 3D, uh, then I do cube my cube, and it is that simple uh, like that. I just say x equal one. <laughs> well, that's the demo effect. I'm sorry, but uh, with a cube, uh, you just display your cube and, and it appears. And uh, that's about it. So it's in development and uh, yes, it will work better for Tuesday. I'm sorry you have this one. <laughs> At, uh, you, you can speak no more. Oh, uh, maybe I want to show you a couple of things that I uh, have forgotten. Um, so let's, let's take this. Can I share? I finish, I just share my screen again. I wanted to show for, you know, uh, people who are wondering uh, if the engine is not uh, powerful enough. It can be very powerful. Why? Do I share my screen? Yes. It can be very powerful because you can put JavaScript, if I do A equal one, then in, if I open curly brackets, I can, the transpiler, insert the code, the JavaScript code directly into the transpiler application, and I can do So let's hope it works. Yes. So you can see it's a very open system and the fact that you can use JavaScript is a very good ed educational uh, way uh, to progress in AOZ because we have no, uh, it's basic. So basic is a language that will for the moment never be in professional, whereas it's only a language. It doesn't, uh, it's very powerful, but the professional will refuse it. So at the end of IOC, when you become fluent and want to discover other language like JavaScript, then you can start using AOC engine directly at the core by putting JavaScript inside, inside of the core. That's, you can talk now, Laura. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Francois and Baptiste. So that's, that's all for us tonight. We, if, uh, we, we can leave some room for, for Q&A. Uh, just standing by, by telling you that uh, next Tuesday we are conducting our first live event where we are going to show uh, many things uh, and we have uh, uh, quite big surprises. So if you may join us, there is a QR code here for the events that will be at 10 a.m. San Francisco time uh, on, on Tuesday. And oh. uh, that's all. For Thank you very much, uh, everyone. And if you have any question, please. Maybe, Laurent, I can show my rainbows. I, I forgot about that. I, I bugged you with it. And I, I would like to show the rainbows before the questions. OK? One last demo. I'm sorry for that. But uh, yeah. You know, uh, what? there was a symbolic instruction in AOZ. And it was the. Uh, the rainbows. Uh, so uh, I'm looking for my twin. Okay. Uh, the, uh, it was a very, actually, very innovative uh, instruction at the time uh, because it was, you know, producing really nice colors and good demo effect, and people were using it everywhere, including me. So in AOZ, with the power of today's machine, I've made a new rainbow based on a new object, which is a twin object. So the rainbow, uh, this is a little rainbow demo uh, uh, still in, uh, in development. Uh, so the colors are now much, much nicer. And uh, you can, have, so you can have very, very complex rainbows and you can have circular demo, uh, rainbows and you can rotate them and this kind of thing. So, uh, uh, Etc. Uh, also, what is uh, very important is that the, the output of the rainbows uh, will be, it will be possible to direct them to lights in a 3D universe. So you can make a light that goes into smoothly into RGB or RGB. 
it can uh, also make the sky and etc. So uh, uh, rainbows are going to be very big. And uh, I let, uh, after that, I finish. I will also uh, bring back uh, the power of palettes uh, because it is something we have all forgotten with the uh, true colors is that a palette is a very handy tool, but on a modern machine, palettes should contain thousands of colors. You should be able to extract the list of colors or the specific colors. And when you have a palette, then you can make color rotation and all this kind of stuff on modern machines. So bring back color rotation. I can't wait to have them back because this is something that has disappeared from every game. I don't hear you very well, but I think I got the question. So uh, it's free. You go to uh, aoz.studio, and then you go to the download page. Uh, you have uh, you have a beta, beta version here. And I said the V1 will be launched uh, the December 26. Uh, excuse me, but uh, Baptiste, you haven't shown the Amiga Transpiler. I think you should show it. You know, uh, I think it's important that you show it. No, no, no. no um, we don't have time? Oh, too bad. Just say it, you know, uh, there is a, if you have WinU, uh, AOZ contains a complete uh, WinUAE and you can uh, edit on your PC and launch in WinUAE as a real uh, compiled AMOS application. Yes. Thanks to Baptiste. Really needed to be said. It's a really good, and also Unity, Unity, uh, AOZ exports to Unity and uses Unity as a renderer. So in AOZ, you can make application that can work, a 10 year old can make application that will run on the PS4 with, by the intermediate of Unity. And uh, the power of JavaScript allows us to connect to anything. Thank you very Thank much. You. And hopefully next year we will be with you uh, in person. I, I really yes. hope uh, we can uh, we can come uh, to to see you in person. Bye bye everyone.